Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in again for your word for the day. Uh, we are counting down the days till both Christmas and our Christmas Eve services. So we do hope that you join us uh, either online or in person as we celebrate the birth of Jesus and all that he's done for us because of this good news that he came. And that's what we're focusing on this week. As we look at word for the day, we're going to be looking uh, continually at all the different things that Jesus' life, death, and resurrection did for us. Why do we celebrate his birth, and why is Christmas that big a deal for Christianity? Uh, and so we've shared a couple already. And the last, or the one that we're going to be focusing on today, we've got a, a couple more this week, but today we're going to be looking at how Jesus reconciles us to God the Father. And, and to look at this, I want you to think about the, the last time in a human relationship, whether that's uh, in your marriage or a friend or a coworker or uh, an acquaintance that you have, I want you to think about the last time an offense or an argument or a disagreement created distance. Because see, when in our human relationships, we experience that all the time. We say stupid things or we, we make mistakes in how we treat people or we get in arguments and there's distance that's created. Um, and scripturally, uh, we understand that same thing about our relationship with our Creator God. See, Isaiah 59 2 says that our sin creates a separation between us and God. That when we rebel against the instructions and commands that God gives us and we step into sin, there's distance that's created in our relationship. We can't be close and connected to God while still rebelling and sinning against Him. And even more so, this sin creates a significant separation, and we need something to bridge that gap. We need something that can help restore and reconcile our relationship to God, but we can't do that on our own. We can not do any better than our own sinful and rebellious choices, which is where Jesus steps in. See, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 19 says that in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And that is such great news that in Christ, the, the life and especially the death and resurrection of Jesus, his sacrifice for us was how God reconciled the world to himself. And that last part is the great news, not counting their trespasses against them. I don't know where you land in your awareness and, and, and weight uh, and observation of your own sin, but I can look at my life and see a lot of ways that I have trespassed, sinned, rebelled, hurt God, and to know that because I can have faith in Jesus, because he came to this world, lived a perfect and sinless life, and died on the cross for my sins and rose three days later, because of that, God doesn't count my trespasses against me. It's incredibly good news. See, it's so easy to hold grudges. It's so easy in our human hearts to look at those disagreements we have with our spouse, with our friends, our coworkers, or neighbors, and hold those things against them and not allow our relationship to reconcile. But the good news that we celebrate on Christmas is God didn't make that choice. Instead, he made the choice to reconcile us to himself, to make a way for that relationship to be restored. And he chose through his son Jesus to not count our trespasses against us. So I hope that you are, are close to Jesus. I hope that you make a choice to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you walk with him each and every day and that because of the great news that be, in Jesus, God reconciled you to himself, not counting your trespasses against you. I hope that that gives you a great reason to celebrate this Christmas and to see that is the greatest gift we could ever receive. Hope that you have a grateful day today, Calvary. We'll see you next time.